All right, so welcome. I am so happy that we've got the opportunity to have an introduction about the uh, uh, the job search phase, supported jo job search phase uh, that we are now entering into together with Arun and then the expectations of everyone, like what we are expecting from everyone, the mandatory things, the optional things, everything that was shared by Rhodes and also the guidance in track selection that, um, that Rehmet and Emtina went through and that we are going to be uh, submitting our final decisions today. So I believe all the morning sessions were very interesting and provided a little bit of guidance on what we can be expecting throughout this phase as well. So yeah, let's dive through the very first thing we should be starting with into this supported job search phase, which is CV writing. How do we build uh, a, a, a job ready CV? You know, the kind of resume you put out there and you are able to communicate your skills, you are able to communicate your experience, the project you have been running, you are able to just communicate you yourself as a profession to different hiring managers that we are going to be targeting in these three months. So yeah, let's get started. Um, Well, before we get started, uh, can I have some check-in reactions that we are okay and ready to get started? Yes, uh, okay, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. So yeah, let's start with the CV overview. You know, when we are talking about CV, uh, actually the main difference with, uh, with, with uh, what we call a CV in the resume, you will find that in most of the hiring uh, jobs that, I mean, in different jobs that are posted out there, that we be requesting us to submit a resume, you know? So what's the main difference? I just realized that this is something I did not include here. So before we go into this first slide, I want to highlight that a CV is mostly just a whole kind of big document that has everything around your experience mostly to the people who have worked more than two three four years you already know that you have so much experience or you have had different projects you have worked on but probably that would be relevant to a certain job and not relevant to another job so um so so that's why most of the times they request you a resume because a resume should be focused on what actually the company is requesting i will give you an example for instance you have some uh some years of being a data engineer before you have been a data engineer let's say like for two years and then before being a data engineer probably before you were some customer service support you know those are two different phases. You, I, I'm referring to the period probably where you were not into the tech space before. And, uh, you know, so when the company you are applying to, it's on the data engineer job, you do not have to submit a CV that has the customer service support kind of uh, experience because they do not need that. And that is not very, very relevant. But yeah, just to clarify that, at Ten Academy, we just call our very one page or two pages CV, but technically outside into different hiring wards, they call it a resume. So whenever you find it out there, please ensure that you are submitting, yes, your CV that you have here at Ten Academy, but ensure that you are uh, customizing to different job applications. We will, go deep, we will go deeper into that when we start uh, week three specifically because that's when we will be starting uh to apply but for now just to clarify that in order to we avoid that kind of question so just take what we are going to be speaking here as a resume or cv just take it as a general word and then everything else around customizing and uh making it very specific or tailoring it according to the job description that are out there 
I mean, everything it will come into week three. So let's go into what we have now. So what is, let's look into the CV overview. Mainly, what, what does a CV imply? Your resume, it's a marketing piece. It's a marketing piece for you, for your personal brand. It's, it's your brand. Let's call it, it's your brand out there. It's your marketing piece. And it should be highlighting your strongest points, which is your education, your professional experience, any projects or skills and or accomplishments. And the purpose of the resume is always to get an interview. Your resume or your CV that is submitted anywhere your main target, the very, very first target you want is for you to get an interview. That's why we were saying that always we tailor it according to the job description we have. We talked about how we will be applying 200 jobs per month. And you will start to ask yourself, how will you tailor your CV according to 200 job descriptions? But I'm telling you, that's how you get an interview. You know, it's going to be tiresome. It's going to be a lot of work. It's super too much, loads of work, but it's worth it. It's worth it at the end of the time because when you get an interview, it's part of the success. It's an experience. Number two, and uh, no, you know, the, res the purpose of the resume is to get an interview and that's why it's important to be interesting. Make whoever reads your resume view you as a valuable, as a valuable to their cause. I think I heard, okay. Those are automations. So when someone is looking at your CV, they should see you as a value. And let me dive deeper into what do I mean as a valuable to their cause. The number, before diving into that, who, when we are talking here about make whoever reads your resume, who reads your resume? Number one is the humans. The C, that's why the CV should be clear, attractive, attractive, and informative. And number two, humans, of course, we are talking about the, uh, the HR managers or any hiring manager that is into a certain company. And then machines, the CV will be subject to automated scanning by a variety of services. And that's why we want your CV to perform very well in scanning. These are most of the softwares we call um, application tracking system, the ATS machines or ATS softwares, however you call it. Most of the software companies, like companies that provide software as a service, they really used to scan uh, the CVs using this software before the hiring managers can go through it. Why do they do this? because almost majority of the people around the world are diving into, um, it, I, they, I mean, they are so passionate or they are looking for possibilities to join these kind of companies because this is the future. Software as a service, you know, companies are the future. They are developing very quick. They hire flexibility in working. They hire remotely. They offer a very good pay. Like everyone really wants to work for these companies. So imagine if a, a, a job application is put out, is sent out by a hiring manager, and then in less than 24 hours, she receives like over a thousand or over 500 applications. She is a human. Probably most of the time, she's not going to go into that thousand applications. So that's why they use these ATS machines for it to select the best CVs the best CVs that should be reviewed by the hiring managers. So your CV, it should attract these two people, the machines and the humans. And then by saying, uh, okay, yeah, very easy question. Actually not easy, but somehow tricky. Before we dive into how do you show your value in your CV to different hiring managers, tell me, how long do you think it takes a recruiter to review a CV for the very first time? How long? You can just write in the chat box or open your mic or anything. How long do you, text, do you think it takes a recruiter to review a resume for the very first time? One minute, three minutes, five minutes? 
Okay, let's see more people. Less than a minute. Okay, that's great. So the person who said less than a minute, he is very correct. It takes an average of 10 to 30 seconds to review a resume for the very first time. 10 to 30 seconds. So our, just picture it in this way. You are a hiring manager and you are opening different resumes that people have submitted. So the very first 30 seconds are what is going to be giving you an implication of what this person is really, without even reading too much. And that is why the most significant part of the, your resume is the top half page. And it must give evidence of a good match to the position. The very half, top half of your page, it should give the evidence that you deserve the role. It should attract the hiring manager. Because when it looks otherwise, in that 30 seconds, they reject it, like, for good. But yeah, this was a finding from LinkedIn, uh, from their surveys uh, that different people who's, who uses uh, recruiter LinkedIn, LinkedIn that is open for only recruiters, you know, th this is what they all submitted. It just takes them 10 to 30 seconds to know that they are going to be spending their time reading through your CV in details, just 10 to 30 seconds. So we should be creating CVs that give out this kind of, um, this kind of um, repetition. Can I call it repetition? Yeah, like the very first look for it. So let's talk about demonstrating value, something I've been wanting to, uh, to talk about. So when we are talking about your resume, always the hiring manager be having this question in mind. How can you be valuable to us? Because why? Because uh, people or, I mean, the whole population of the company, that's where most of the co company cost goes into. Like the people, we are the very biggest expenses for the company. More than any platform they pay for, any advertisement they pay for, any rent they pay, any whatever they pay, majority of the companies always say that the people in their company are their very highest expenses. So when the employers are looking at your CV, they want to see how can you be valuable to us. And this is where the other point of tailoring your CV according to the job description comes into. Because if your CV is looking even a little bit different from what they're expecting, they won't think you will be providing them any value, even though you are experienced or, or you are an expert in your field. If they think that you have an experience that is not related with what they are looking for, then it's a no. It's a no. How can you be valuable to us? Always when you are applying, ask yourself this question. I'm applying for this company on this position. How do I think am I going to be valuable to them? We will come back to this question again when we are learning about also cover letters. Most people ignore cover letters, but to be honest, that's where uh, the hiring managers or employers answer this question for them because that's where you ask, answer this question. And Okay, we will come back to it into the cover letter, but your CV should be responding this question. And how? It's through the value, your experience plus accomplishments. Experience plus accomplishments. I think today people who have been reviewing some of their CVs in the past weeks, uh, in the past weeks, I've been telling you that you should not just list, oh, I was developing this and that for this company. The employer is interested into the accomplishments. What are the results came, came from your work? You, know, you highlight, of course, what you did, and you highlight how it impacted your team, your portfolio, or your, uh, the milestone within your team, or the milestone you had to hit, or how it impacted the company in general. So your experience should always go with the accomplishments. And then you showcase your value through your skills and then education. I hope we do not care too much about the education part because so many people will have different backgrounds. 
and um you know you know we we have different backgrounds like let's assume it like that because um why am i saying this it's because you will find that you probably did your um how do we call it your bachelor or your master's in a very different sector or very different field like it's okay leave it like this at least you have an a 10 academy education which will really be relevant to your experience accomplishments and the current skills of the job you are looking for but if you have an education in a different sector it's okay just don't feel like you're going to be dropped just because of that i hope you all know that by the way so yeah successful job seekers always you understand your unique combination of experience plus accomplishments, skills, education, and art you articulate um, your value to the employees. These four things, the experience, accomplishments, skills, and educations are the one that articulates your value to the employees. So let's go through into the resume components. As a recap, we have seen why the CV, like the very overview of a resume or a CV, we have looked into, um, we have looked into uh, the, the goal, the fact that the goal is to ensure that it satisfies two audiences, which is the humans and the machines. And then we have looked into the fact that our very top half of the page should be uh demonstrating that we are good match to the position and the fact that it takes an average of 10 to 30 seconds for an employer to review your resume and decide if they are going to go ahead and spend their time looking into the details so we should ensure that the first impression really matters and then we sh we we learned on how we should be demonstrating our values through the experience and accomplishments very key and then the skills very key and then the education and then actually when we are talking about the schools i hope we understand everything also around any project we did any licenses we have any certifications that we have do not think that uh, when i'm saying about the schools i'm just mentioning only uh like python language only like mm -mm. so okay let's dive into deeper into this Resume components, the very first thing, it's your contact information, the name, the contact information, your email and the phone number are very important. Your address is optional, you can put it or do not put it, it's all right. And then uh, links to your portfolio pages, which is the GitHub profile, 10 Academy profile, Medium profile, and then also the LinkedIn account profile. We, throughout this week, we will be having these four profiles ready to be um, ready to be reviewed by the technical team and also by the careers team. So yeah, contact information first. Then resume components, professional summary. So when I said that uh, the employer spends 10 to 30 seconds reviewing your resume, most of the time they are not looking at your names, of course, we totally understand that they go through the summary like very very first thing the projects the professional summary very key thing so what should be having in the professional summary this should be a 50 word brief description of yourself in relation to what you can do and the concept and tools that you are familiar with we already have these summarize i mean very elaborated in the careers manual which i believe you received throughout your emails confirm for me that or if you haven't received it then i will be sharing it then with this 50 word summary a recruiter will be able to see which career track is being pursued is it gen ai machine learning web3 and data engineering that's why we want to submit we want you to submit your tracks today because your cv should be tailored to the main kind of uh jobs that you you are going to be applying for are they are they gen ai jobs or machine learning jobs or web3 or even data engineering so the recruiter should be able to see this in this 50 word summary he should be able to see the three 
of five relevant technology keywords. And this should speak to the employers and should be the interception of, number one, what the trainees have been exposed to as part of the 10 Academy training. I'm talking just in fact, you do not have much of the experience, like what prior work experience in your field. So, you know, that's what we are basing on here. Um, number one, the trainees, um, what the trainees have been exposed to as part of the 10 Academy training. And then number two, what employers, what the trainees to be able to use from day one. Here we are talking about the tools and everything. And then what the trainees are familiar enough to work with or speak about during an interview. This comes to different kind of experiences in projects, in different projects you run previously or even during 10 Academy trainings. So you should be able to see this thing. What you were exposed to, what you were exposed to during the training. Number two, uh, what you'll be able to use from day one, like you know, they want to understand if they will take time trying to make you familiar with certain tools. So you should be mentioning the kind of tools or concept you are familiar with. And then number three, uh, something you are familiar enough to work with or speak about during an interview. So the continuation, uh, as a continuation of what we have here, number three things, it should be able to show that your CV is of a professional and not a student. This is what Arun was explaining that we do not want the CV or the jobs you are applying for to be having, to be of those people who have zero work experience. No, to be honest, no. So your CV should be looking like a professional CV, whether you have an experience or whether you do not have any prior experience. Not of a student, because for students, most of the time, they be mentioning things like, uh, um, how can I call it? Like, I am a student of this, this and that, and I'm aspiring to be, and I'm seeking this and that, you know, mm -mm. it should be of a professional, like you are right on point of what you know, and they should be able to see what you are looking for in your CV without you mentioning it big time. Like you do, you do not have to say anything like you are open to this and that. Keep it professional, like go for two or three years uh, of experience kind of profession. Number four, um, you should be understanding what employers are looking for in junior level employees. For instance, junior machine learning engineers are more likely to maintain the features than to run their own full-scale data analysis. Like one of the other things that we will also talk about is to be honest within your resume, because most of the time we tend to use terminologies that make us look like we are senior people. Like many people do this. It, it, it tries to make you look like you're a senior person when you are actually uh, a mid-level or even a junior person. This happened to me once. And you know what, what were the results? I was invited to an interview in less than two hours after submitting my, my resume. Less than two hours, I received an invite to an interview because my resume really looked so fancy and looked like it was of a senior person. It was at my dream company. And of course they thought I'm a senior person, you know? So I got an interview and when I got into the interview, you know what happened? They asked me questions and I couldn't answer them. And you know what that shows? It kills your reputation. They take you as a person who were lying. I don't know if I will ever have a chance to apply to that company again. Like I had to forget about it. Like I, I really failed myself there. So let's ensure that we are looking like who we really are on the CV. So junior machine learning engineers, they are more likely to maintain features than to run their own full-scale data analysis. These kind of examples are in the careers manual, so you will get to understand much more when you are reading through the careers manual. And those are another example. For instance, junior data engineers, are, they are more likely to maintain pipelines done to build pipelines you know so ensure that you are you understand exactly 
the kind of level you are on so that you set your CV in an honest manner, like in a realistic manner. And then also uh, junior level employees or mid-level employees, we also get to understand that employers want reliable, high quality tested systems, which are computationally efficient. So this is something that we also understand on a junior level, like we, it doesn't require us to have kind of a mid or senior level um, for us to understand this. So these are examples. I put here the dots because we have also extra other examples into the careers manual. So please ensure that we read through it. Now let's move from uh, what we'll be looking at. We looked at the contact and then the professional summary. So, you know, let's go into this course. We are not yet half into our CV page. You know, this is like, we are still into the quota of our CV page. You see a CV page, like a normal Word document page. We are currently into like the quota of it. So this is where we are mentioning then the skills. Uh, why? Because of course you, you, the employer wants to see, wants to read the summary and then have a quick eye on the skills because the skills are quite there, like it's visible. It's, if it's Python, if it's C++, if it's uh, any database you have used before, it's very specific. Like the skills part is very, very specific. I will show you an example of a CV that we'll be referring to, but it's very, very specific. So this is why we should be having technical skills on the upper or the top, uh, at the top of our page. So yeah, technical skills. They should be there. You can use any acronyms or you can, I mean, you can use any acronyms, abbreviations, how we call it, or you can uh, actually, yeah, quick acronyms, they are so much better always. And then on resume num components number four, it's experience. This is the very important part. And this is where we are approaching half page, you know, that the employers just put an eye at in the very 30 seconds. So we are approaching there. So what do we put into the experience? We put here the relevant work experience and internships. What Before you go there, what do I mean by relevant work experience? This is where I come back to that example I gave you when I was starting about you being in data engineering, but before you were a customer support in a certain company. You know, customer support is no longer really relevant to data engineering jobs. Like hiring manager is not interested to know how uh, you were supporting clients unless, unless this is a role that is saying that you will be joining the customer success team but as a technical per, as a technical person, because yes, we always have that in most of the companies. How can I say it much better? Um, for instance, we have uh, you are a data engineer, or you are a data analyst or data scientist in a in a school, you are applying to be a data scientist in a school, a university. And what will you be doing? It's to extract data, to clean their data according of their students' results in different tests and different homeworks and different exams. So what does that mean? You are actually joining a customer success team, you know, the, the, the team that takes care of the students, but as a data engineer. In that sense, your customer service role really makes sense. It makes sense so you can add it there. But imagine you're applying just to be a data engineer in, in what company? In just a data engineer company, data engineering company, a company that helps other companies with data services you do not really need to highlight customer service because you won't be interacting with any customers. I believe that makes sense and I'm not confusing you. So we have to put their relevant work experience. And number two, 
you can put their internships or volunteer positions applicable to this position. Again, relevant to this position. You do not want to put an internship that is very, very different just because you did it. No, do not put it there for the sake of fulfilling your, res your resume page. So let's ensure you put there any relevant work experience or internships or volunteer positions applicable to the positions. So nota bene, recruiters are more interested in your achievements than your JDs. Again, recruiters are interested in the achievements than the job description. So you should mention you should mention the result from your work. For instance, if you did XYZ job, how did it impact your team's milestone or your company in general? Very specific. Number two, for instance, how many clients were served? I was talking about you being a data engineer in a school, in a university. How many, how many clients were being served in this perspective? Like how, in my in my role we call it book of account not sure how you call it on your side but how many people were there for instance if i'm writing about my resume sorry if i'm writing about my resume about 10 academy i should be mentioning the kind of numbers like at 10 academy we had 35 uh trainees who i was i was serving like i should be mentioning that specific number if relevant of course you know, or how many team members did you manage? If you were a team leader, I realized some people in your previous CV submitted, I realized some people who were some head of programs uh, in, a, in certain universities in Ethiopia or head of a certain single program. We want to understand if you were head and you had a team which you were superheading, how many team members were there? these are the crucial things these are the crucial things to put there so mention what you did and add any important information around your achievements and then our uh, resume components number five it's on projects here we include notable projects uh, that you have carried out including short description with a link to the project this can be it's an academic project of course there should be projects highlighted under work experience. And then resume components number six, which is on education. Include your education background in reverse chronological order, or everything actually should be highlighted in reverse chronological order. That means from the most recent to the past ones, you know, so, when you're highlighting your education, what is the most recent? Is it your master's degree? Is it your bachelor degree or high school? Just in case you never did any bachelor. So just ensure that you put here the most recent. You do not have to add, if of course you went to the bachelor, if you did your bachelor, you do not have to add your high school information or primary information. Do not add that. Just keep it uh with the most relevant one the bachelor or the masters of course if you have the masters you should be including your bachelor degree as well so include there the major or the major of course and then graduation date if you graduated already or the expected graduation date if you're still studying and then add your gpa if strong if strong or if required by the company gpa is not mandatory to any resume unless it's very strong like it's very very impressive and probably it was in your field like you did software development or any related tech uh course at the university and then your gpa was strong or it's required by the company that's when you add it there otherwise do not add a, your gpa at all on your resume of course do not include high school or primary and really about coursework or trainings and their completion dates. Under education, you mention, of course, the school you went to and, and your major, and then you can mention any other education or trainings you did. Yep. Especially like very well recognized trainings like Penn Academy, like put it there. 
if it's still ongoing, you put uh, the fact that it's still ongoing or and the expectation end date that is June or July. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then we have uh, another optional thing you have to put there if it's really fun to you, which is the license and certifications. If you have any certification, um, talking about uh, relevant Udemy or not like small Udemy courses. If you did like a very strong, long Udemy or Coursera course and you have this kind of certification, put it there. If you have any license, not sure if any of us have any license here, but if you have any license that is connected with uh, the role you want to apply on, that means Web3, machine learning, or data, or Gen AI. If you have any kind of relevant license, put it there, put it there. I'm not sure we are on the stage of having licenses here, but if in case you have, put it there. But for the certification, I'm very big on this. Put it there if you did a certain course online, or even not online, but it was very, very strong. Like it was not those small one day trainings, uh -uh. like a course that took you like more than, uh, how do we call it? More than one month, two months, six months, like the people who did ALX. I'm pretty sure we have some people who did ALX before, like ALX Africa uh, for beginners. If you have that certification, put it there. You know, and it should have your name, the name of the certification, the issuing organization, the date you earned that certification, of course, the date it's on your certificate, and the location if applicable. But if not applicable, do not put it. This is very optional. Any additional details if applicable, just that. So I don't, I, again, do not confuse professional certification with honors and awards. These are very different. Uh, the honors and awards is also another part of the CV that we do not most of the time talk about because we are still juniors. Most of the time when we are talking about honors and awards, we are talking about any kind of big hackathons we were involved into and we were like the first run up or we were the winners. Those are the honors and awards, but we do not think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if we have people who have this kind of honors and awards, then uh, we add it in the careers manual, but we ignore this for now. So do not confuse professional certification with honors and awards because they can be awarded to you according to anything which we cannot control. But certifications, they are real, like we can see them, and of course, you will have something I forgot to add here. If you can add the link to your certification, that will be super beautiful, of course. And then also, um, Oh, sorry for that. I lost my network. I do not know where you lost me at. Can someone help me? The last bulletin on the current slide.
Oh, sorry, sorry. Just go back one slide and, okay. and yeah. Okay. So let me talk about the license and certifications again. I was talking about if you have any certification, was giving examples of people who have gone to ALX, like really advanced certifications in tech industry, put them there. They can be either online or they can be physical. Any certification that you aren't online or physical, but they should be, if they are online, they should be like long courses you took. That course that took you more than one month of a daily commitment, by the way, one month up to six months, up to one year of you trying to get that certification. Put there that certification. What you do not put there is any short or small online course that you took just to upskill yourself. That is not relevant. So we do not add it there. So moving forward, um, resume formats, first impressions are also very important. Your resume first, we will talk about it. It should, it doesn't have to have any picture. Please remove any picture or any photo on your resume. And number two, use professional consistent styles, punctuations and fonts. It should be in reverse chronological order. Like it should be from the most recent things to the past things. Um, so the page layout, the lining, everything should be really consistent on how they look. And they, of course they should be looking professional. You should be utilizing your bullet points in order of importance. For instance, when you are trying to highlight the project you worked on at 10 Academy, uh, list them in order of importance. Do not put an important project the at the list project because the hiring manager, I mean, like almost everyone, we are likely to read the very first thing and assume that that is the best thing you did, but more than the rest of the things that are listed here. So ensure that you order them in order of importance and one, it should be one or two pages at most. One or two pages maximum. <clears throat> so final resume checklist again your cv has no photo um why has people have been uh, avoiding P cvs with photos is because most of the people out here job seekers they have been claiming that uh the photos the presence of photos on their cvs it attracts um, how do we call it? Discrimination. It attracts discrimination. This was from the US kind of population, you know, so they prefer that your, your CV is that not according to how you look. So do not put there your photo. It's now considered a not professional thing. So do not. You will also find that when you go to these, uh, to these pages or websites, where you create your resumes, majority of the CVs there, they have been edited to not include pictures. But if you know in the past, most of the CVs like on Nova resume or on Canvas, they used to come with a place where you have to add your picture. But majority of them now, they do not have any pictures unless it's requested in the job description, which I do not think can be requested, but yeah, unless it is. And then, um, then your name, it should be 100 consistent across your CV, LinkedIn, GitHub, 10 Academy profiles. So ensure that the full name you will put here are the names you expect to put on your profile, on all other profiles. And then all links, they should be, they should work and click clickable and goes to the right place. And your CV should be saved in PDF, named correctly, uh, full name cv.pdf correctly this is the very correct format this is an example of someone who was here last cohorts called ayomide ayomide lawal this he, this is his full name slash or a, how do we call this just this line cv.pdf don't laugh at me really i'm forgetting the name of this thing then zero it should be having zero spelling mistakes 
and it should be having zero issues with the formatting, like the font sizes, the type, the spacing, the paragraphs, everything should be looking consistent. And then they experience the skills and the results are consistent and correlate. What do we mean here? Ensure that the experience put here, the skills and the results here, I mean your achievement, are consistent and correlate because these are the things you will be putting in your LinkedIn uh, and on your 10 Academy profile. I'm not, sh not, not up to GitHub, just a 10 Academy profile and LinkedIn. So ensure that the experience you put here, you want to put the, ex the same experience on your LinkedIn and 10 Academy profile in the next coming days of this week. And then you should be clear and concise to keep your CV one page or two pages maximum. It requires to you to be as straight as possible. Be clear and concise. And then uh, link to your 10 Academy online portfolio that expands on your experience. These ones, we will add them at the end of the week when we have our feedbacks back. And then no logos, no background colors, no icons, no any other graphics are allowed in a CV. Some people, when we were collecting your CVs from the very first day you joined 10 Academy, there are people who had screenshots of their bachelor's or master's degrees in their CVs. That is not allowed. Like, do not put them there. You can just put a link to that certificate or to that degree if you want the hiring manager to see it. And of course, if he has the good GPA or he has like good impressive results, put the link there, do not add any kind of uh, graphics in your CV. And then also use the appropriate keywords matching the job posting. We will see this of course in the upcoming week as well, but for now, use the appropriate keywords uh, from your experience or your the, the the projects that you're highlighting that you did like use the appropriate keywords that is related to that specific thing so let's have a look at the challenge document <clears throat> so deadline for submission is on wednesday so that we get time to uh okay it's so on wednesday then on thursday we will be having oh sorry on wednesday still we'll be having tutorials on creating your github profile and also your medium profile and thursday we'll be having your cover letter tutorial and linkedin profile tutorial so we want you to submit on wednesday so that after all other tutorials you will be submitting your final cvs that includes all the links on Saturday. So this is the very first submission. You will submit it, we give you individual feedbacks, you review your CV, and then final submissions are on Saturday with everything, everything done. Those are the CVs that we'll be keeping ourselves as well, just in case there is any hiring manager that approaches us for any candidates. So yeah, for now, the design is on Thursday. When is the sorry? Um, <clears throat> so we have the background of what is a CV and we have professional CV checklists that is here. This is the things that your CV should have, your name and contact information. It shouldn't have any photo, 50 words maximum for the professional summary, technical skills that are relevant to the track you selected, experience uh, highlighted in reverse chronological order, Project summaries are detailed, educational background in reverse chronological order, and any relevant license or certification. Like this is the checklist. Before submitting, ensure that you have maximum of these seven things on your CV. So for more kind of information or updating yourself when you are doing it, refer to the tutorial slide deck or the or under section. 4.5 section that is from page 24 to page 29 of the careers manual for the details on each section, each section here. So to remember, name should be 100% consistent 
and all links why do we keep saying that your name should be 100 percent consistent when we you can think like oh this is an obvious thing but this is to ensure that uh you are easy searchable can i say easy searchable like when someone goes on linkedin or goes on a certain even on google and they dial your name they are able just to find all information about you at once all information about you at once so ensure that your name is consistent on how you write it everywhere and then all the links are clickable zero spelling mistakes no issues with formatting it's the same thing we talked about in the tutorial document so look uh, read through it again then your cv should be saved as pdf and named correctly again into this format should be having your full name slash cv dot pdf of course the pdf will be coming by automatic so just keep the full name slash cv <laughs> so sorry um then the task is to prepare your one page or maximum two pages yes two page cv yeah that was correct that will be used to apply for jobs from march 18th that is like later next week or early in the week three then find here examples of professional summaries to use in your header example these are examples i i hope we do not copy them but there are examples just that we just put together to guide you on what should be uh, your 50 word summary. You can see, for instance, like this very first one, it says a junior data engineer with experience in building data pipelines and developing architecture for data generation and collection. She's skilled in identifying, analyzing, and interpreting trends in data sets using statistical techniques, application of ETL procedures to data and building visualization to summarize results. Like 45 words. They, he talked about what he does, I mean, who he, who he is, who she is, it's a she, and what she's skilled in, and the kind of tools he she uses using this and that easy and simple and really attractive um yeah just read through that as well then you will find here a template you can use very optional if you have any better other templates please use that but this is uh what we have so far let me open it for you as well mm. okay here's the template we have it has where your full name should be at the address the professional summary the skills and the work experience when we're talking about half page that 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 your half that the half of your page your cv page should be attractive this is what we mean the, the employer is quickly easy to see the summary the skills and a little bit of the experience and then everything that is here is what attracts the employer to just go read then into your work experience and then the project and education. I will add something down here about the license and certification just in case anyone wants to add any, but this is what we have. Um, yep, and on the skills part, it was better to highlight it this way so that it doesn't take you much of your uh, space on your CV any technical skills list them here separate them with a comma just to not to not make a very long list and then any soft skills here it can be leadership just according to experience if you have ever led a team it can be communication it can be um anything 
according to your experience, of course, and then separate them with a comma, and then any software tools that you are familiar with using, highlight them here as well. Like this gives a full picture in very short sentences. Um, yeah, let's go back to, um, to the template. And then also refer to this folder for the ideal CV requirements in your respective track. Let's go there as well. Oh. Okay. I'm trying to sign in. One minute, one minute, it's loading. Okay. So here we have, um, here we have a folder that has the ideal CV requirements in your respective track. These are the things, okay, to give you a background, we had to look for different, uh, what's the current different hiring managers are looking into, especially in your roles. So we put together educational background, please, it does not matter, but of course they say that they, they prefer people who have been into computer science, information technology, engineering, or related things. And advanced degrees, master's, PhD may be preferred for, of course, senior roles. Just in case you consider, we keep saying that we are juniors, yes, but I believe there are people who came just to upskill. There might be some of you. Uh, we haven't reviewed the self-assessment results yet from the self-assessment challenge of week 12. But just in case, every information is here. If you have a master's or PhD, of course, put it there, no matter if you're applying for a senior or junior role. And uh, for technical skills, this is for data engineering specialization. There, there are these programming languages that are preferred database management, uh, big data technologies that are, request, are required data warehouse solutions like it has everything that you can refer to you do not have to fulfill everything but just to give you a glimpse of what the hiring managers are looking for and keep in mind that this should not scare us in case it's a lot of things they are looking for because uh when we were looking we were not just looking on local kind of roles like ethiopian best roles or african best roles only we were looking for international roles and companies are very different a junior role at google of course is totally different with a junior role at 10 academy because google is so huge so you might find that a senior person at 10 academy might have to work on a mid-level role at google because the scope of the work at google is very very huge so do not let anything scare you. Just This is just for information purpose. So we have everything expected on data engineering, gen AI, machine learning, and Web3. So refer to it as well in case you feel like you want to read through it. We have other downloadable CV templates. Uh, I have them here. It's kind of a little bit challenging to download them. But if you find one that you're interested in and you want to download it, hit me a DM and then I show you. It's some, it's some buttons that are hidden inside this, inside this software. So there is a way to download it without paying. So hit me a DM and I show you. So other websites where you can design your CV, it can be on Canva, Nova Resume, or Overleaf.com. These are the most common ones submissions submit on your your pdf your cv in pdf format on tanks and the marking rubrics are very detailed very detailed on personal information professional summary on the seven things plus the formatting so very clear individual feedback it will be given to you all um, according to your submissions Okay, um, any questions, any curiosity, 
anything. Yes, Fenwell. Hi, Professor. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So, uh, for those of us who have, you know, experience in, you know, software development or other technical skills, are we supposed to mention them in full, or are we supposed to, you know, mention them vaguely? Like, <laughs> I've been in software development for this many years, or in any other type of technical skill. Since we're applying oh. to specific things, like it should be catered to those roles, right? So any other, uh, I mean, experience uh, should be relevant I or not? I'm struggling to hear you. Uh, okay, how about now? Try to speak again. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, there is a lot of noise in the background. Sorry about that. So I was talking about uh, the previous experiences that we had so far. And if we need to mention them in the preview that we're going to arrive. The previous experience? Mm -hmm. Like what experience? Related to software development or any other technical. Now, yeah. Experience. Yeah. Of course, that's what we talked about. That should be involved. That should be mentioned in your work experience. I mean, what if it's not directly related to what we're applying for? Is it still relevant or? It's relevant as long as it's tech, or it involved okay. some small technical thing, or it was in a tech company. Like uh, the most relevant, the most relevant, they should be mentioned. Um, and then make this sage about owners and hours, how old they should be. Um, well, I actually believe I do. I sh I would be biased if I was going to say like they should be not more than five years old. But if it's relevant and you feel like it was a big owner or big award, please mention it. Please mention it. Either year it was given to you, mention it. It's all right. Um, yeah, we will be having to evaluate together. Uh, make this after when is the submission and then see if it's really fun to put it there or if or if it's not um is it the matter to have different emails for links i have time what do you mean by different emails for links would you open your mic Or if you can. Yes, cry. yes. Okay. Yes, I can speak. Uh, I have uh, different uh, emails name. Uh, for example, I have uh, uh, different for uh, Medium, for GitHub, for uh, LinkedIn. So, is it matter for that? No, but when you, you when you share your link with me, I can be able to access it, right? yeah yes from okay then it's all right it's all right your email i guess to those platforms are just for you to sign in and i do not think any third party like me or higher link manager will require any email to access your link i do not think those things are correlated really so it's all right as long as your links are accessible accessible um yes aya Hi, Pascaline. Um, so kind of follow up question from Fanuel uh, mm -hmm. related to the um, uh, educational background and work experience. Uh, I think some of us are uh, here to change our career paths. Uh, uh, for example, me uh, from mathematics 
to <laughs> gen AI, uh, uh, which means um, according to those uh, checklists and uh, the points that we need to put on the CV, uh, except the educational background, everything is going to be like zero. <laughs> uh, oh, and yeah, yeah. and uh, I believe that that's not really, I mean, uh, those backgrounds uh, have a, a great influence and a, a, a great contribution for us even to be here uh, because uh, mathematics uh, it, it, it can be applied anywhere right so uh, mentioning that will uh, in my opinion will elevate the 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 a cv or the experience i have uh, mm. maybe I, I, will, I will i will have a one-to-one -one talk with you or arun mm. uh, I, I need to organize them uh, uh -huh. so that would fit to the uh, job uh, description or requirement mm. uh, and also there are some points that for example me i need to put them some of the uh, scholarships that i awards that i got before and i don't know how you <laughs> uh, see those points uh, and also the uh, the template uh, if you remember Catherine, Catherine from Rwanda, uh, she showed us some uh, templates, uh, and mm -hmm. even one template was actually my uh, CV template. Uh, of course, I will remove the pictures, uh, but the formatting, uh, for example, not have not to have icons, uh, color, etc those are a bit i, I don't know <laughs> yeah uh. mm -hmm. yeah got you uh so yeah you you reminded me of that maybe I just mm -hmm. just for a quick note can i show you my cv and just uh, uh yeah can you share it now like now yes now. okay yeah thank you Thank you. Inbox. Okay. Uh, to answer the very first question around, uh, of course, people who, who are changing your career, the careers. The one thing I know is that always it's okay. I mean, if that's the case, if that is the case, like completely the case, it is okay to still highlight your experience, even though it's not tech related. And down, you have to be here i've realized that so many people have been adding options for living you know and they put here that it was career change but you still have to showcase that you have prior working experience and of course as you have worked uh you know in mathematics related field that is science actually i believe that would be preferable to some of the companies so i know that uh in that case still highlight uh your experience talking to the other people also who have the same question still highlight your experience even though it's not tech related and then you will add here career change option for leaving you will add career change and then after submissions on wednesday uh, we be having a clear idea of how we can interpret that to hiring managers in our CVs, of course, not during interviews, in our CVs. So yeah, AI, thanks for raising that. I uh, will ensure that. But for now, for these submissions, when is the submissions, put there your work experience as the, the, the most recent and relevant ones. Uh, no, most recent ones. Of course, they are not relevant in your case. So the most recent one, put it there to showcase that you have been working before. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fenuel, if I get your 
question wrong before i think i believe that is answered yes um so yeah it's sort of answered but what i meant was my three base experience comes in like you know on one page on so on so are we supposed to put an overview of it or detail was my question so if you say if it is the most recent then i guess i'll just have to you know cut uh, all the names mm. did you hear me uh well, we're struggling to hear you but i think i heard you say that you're going to put them there and see uh okay maybe uh, can you type you in chat box? Yeah, yeah maybe I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, um, I think that is it. Where was I going to edit something? Uh, hi, Addis. I think you were trying to speak, but your microphone was breaking, breaking. Can you fix it and open the mic again? Yeah, uh, so I try to highlight it here. Well, I believe it's visible. Relevant or most recent experience in case you do not have prior technical work experience. So just... This is what you have worked on. Uh, I think your microphone is really, really breaking. Um, okay. Uh, at least your microphone was breaking really, really, so I had to mute you again. Or was it? On my side only. If you had uh, Abraham's microphone breaking, can you give me some hand, thumbs up? Because it might be my network. Okay. Yeah, um, Addis, fix it and uh, open the mic again or share in the chat box. So, Fenuel said the previous experience on its own might fill up a single page and it might be really related to what i'm applying for so i was saying should i only mention it as an overview or put the details like my previous cv ah uh, no it shouldn't have all the some details like 10 bullet points not really uh let the maximum if your experience was too long and you have a lot to say at least make them maximum seven bullet points. You know, seven bullet points at least. Because to be honest, uh, the hiring managers, I was going to say they are the most complicated, but they are not most complicated. They just have limited time to read through all the bullet points in your CV. And you do not want them to spend much time reading uh, how do you call it? reading just your one experience? They still have a lot of things to read on, on your CV. Other experiences, the project summaries to look into your education, if there is any links to the projects, like they have a lot to read about. So it's better to be straightforward with what you are writing in your CV. That's why we said the ideal CV page should be one page, but in case you have prior large experiences, make it maximum two pages and do not put there any unnecessary information put there what you were doing 
the results, the tools you were using done. People who were involved, uh, how many people was that um, your work was going to solve or how many team members was under your team, anything, anything that you have there. So be straightforward. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other questions? All right. I believe everything is okay. I look forward to the Wednesday submissions. Uh, do not restrict yourself in the CVs that you're going to be submitting because those are not the final ones. The final ones will be on Saturday. So put there everything and then we will discuss about it on Thursday or we will provide you even written feedbacks and then uh, you adjust it on Saturday, we'll be having a final one. So on this one, uh, write everything as possible. You know, do not restrict yourself. Yeah. Um, okay, okay, all right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, something I'm forgetting. Yeah, uh, someone asked, was forgetting what the question I saw here. If, if the manual has been shared, can I confirm that you have not received the manual? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, okay. I'll, um, I will reach out to Rodas for her to give you all access. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, then have a great day moving forward.